everyone, my name is Lauren Jane Hesch. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm standing here in Seward, Alaska. This is my renovated fish home slash uh, tiny house for the summer. So I've been here since June. I came up with my dad. Actually, he was the one who drove it. I flew up here the day after I graduated from high school, and I've been volunteering at the Alaska Sea Life Center ever since, and just hanging out and living life, and traveling and meeting people and being in Alaska. Do you want to give us a quick tour of the outside? Yeah, sure. This is uh, the back door, which previously opened, but we have padlocks shut for the summer because my bed is right on the other side. So these are the windows that I wake up uh, to the sun streaming over the mountains. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. Around the back side, we have some writings that have since faded away, but were done in crayon at some point. Uh, this one says wear sunscreen because you need to wear sunscreen more than you think you do in Alaska. I learned that this summer. These are some drawings that my family did. These are some that my French Canadian hitchhiker friend did. Her name was Yara, and this is the symbol of her favorite musician. She spoke French, but she said, no one is a stranger, let's share a meal. So she invited strangers to my house basically so that they would like come eat with us. Here's a cooler that my dad put all of his fish in. Here's a gas can full of gasoline because I filled my car full of diesel by accident. Less than a week ago, I accidentally put diesel instead of gas into my car, and this is in Alaska, and this is thousands of miles away from my home, and this is me stuck in, you know, the laundromat parking lot, bawling my eyes out because it's 9 p.m. and I don't know what to do and I don't know who to call. And, you know, people in Alaska look at you like, are you serious? You put diesel instead of gas in your car. This is my vehicle, these are the spare tires. Uh, this is just says that you are breathing because people sometimes probably forget how amazing it is just to be breathing. So I just wanna remind them, I just wanna let them know. Um, this is something else that I wrote in Cran. It took me all afternoon and I got it done. It's the meaning behind the word namaste, which people say at the end of yoga. Uh, here's my picnic table and everything that's outside. Here's a skateboard that I bought at the thrift store that I haven't used. Here's uh, a piece of wood that my friend tried to start a fire with after three days of rain. Fish carcass that I found on the beach with my friend. Here are some plants that I've been growing. Uh, I just bought the seeds at the grocery store and planted them and next thing I know, I have uh, dill and basil and stuff and then some pretty flowers. This is a big part of my everyday life, even when it's raining. Here in Seward, as lovely as it is, it rains a lot. And um, yeah, there have been some moisture issues, definitely. Uh, the insulation is like right here and the windows aren't perfect seals and it leaks. And I think that would be the number one pitfall of uh, living in this circumstance. <laughs> This is a water-stained Vincent van Gogh painting that my sister gave me, and we can take a look at the inside if you want to. Okay, welcome home. This is where I live. This is where I exist day to day. Without further ado, these are some Tibetan peace and prayer flags. Um, this is kind of like the kitchen, the kitchen end of things. I have a little refrigerator. I have um, a little table that my dad built. It's very, very simple. I have my coffee pot, you know, I'm like a real adult person who drinks coffee and has a coffee pot. And then I have um, just a little like hot plate to use my pots and pans on and stuff. You know, I can like scramble eggs and like <laughs> eat, uh, eat pretty basic, but uh, manage to eat pretty well here. Um, I have my coffee cups hanging up. It's a really good use of storage to just, you know, use all of the ceiling space. Um, the ceiling space includes a lot of postcards that I've written to people or will write to people or things that people have written to me. Uh, there's a couple from where I live. Duluth, Minnesota. Duluth, Minnesota. And um, another picture over here of Duluth. Um, here's a stack of letters that people have written to me in exchange for me writing letters to them. And it's always the best feeling to go to the post office and, you know, get a letter from a friend back in Minnesota. My advice, uh, number one, is write letters. Uh, write postcards, write whatever you can. Just write things down that happen to you because even if you don't turn them into anything, if you're living this style of life, crazy things will happen to you and you'll want to look back and you'll be happy that you wrote stuff down. 
Here's all of my notebooks. I've been journaling a lot while I'm up here. I tell you, if you go to Alaska and if you live this kind of lifestyle, you're going to be journaling more than you think you are. <laughs> um, this is a calendar that is uh, the Mountain Men of Alaska. People rave about it. We sell it where I work, so I tell people all the time. This calendar doesn't start until 2017, but I just put it up on my wall on a random month because I just love it. It's perfect. Here is a chair that my mom had while she was in high school, so it's kind of nice to have it up here with me. It folds up some way that I don't know how to fold it. Um, and those are some chairs that somebody left here, and they're not mine, but I guess they thought that I would like to have them, because now I do. Here's my record player. It was absolutely essential that this come to Alaska with me. I got it from my sister um, for my birthday a couple years ago, and just like it's been a big part of my life ever since. So right now, uh, Bob Dylan's greatest hits. It's really, it's really swell. <laughs> so yeah, this is where I keep my record collection, my augmented record collection. Here's my little bookshelf. Only the, only my very, very favorites, of course, got to make the trip. To my home. Not to my home. Um, here's my camera case. It's important to be taking pictures of everything. Here's uh, the, you know, the footwear. The, Alaska requires a lot of footwear. Um, here is my bed space. This is a cute little bunk bed system that my dad and I built. Just simple, like, two by fours and stuff. Here's some foam mattressing, and this is like a camp mattress from my dad's from like 30 years ago. <laughs> but. Um, this is where I keep all my food, you know, it's a lot of stuff in jars and cans and like the little bit that's in the fridge, but you know, just like a nice plastic shelving. Stay on top of your dishes. Stay on top of the dishes all the time. Like you're in a small space and if your dishes get dirty and you know, like you need them and they're dirty and you are like existing off one plastic fork for like a week, like that hasn't happened to me, of course, not at all, but uh, <laughs> you might end up existing off one plastic fork and then your life will be sad. So do your dishes. Yep, that's my advice. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of that. Here's my dream catcher. Catches all my dreams, you know? Here's some binoculars that my mom used to have. These are my mom's back when she was like in high school. And you know, when you live right next to like mountains and water, there are otters and there's all sorts of crazy stuff to look at with these awesome binoculars. Here's my cowboy hat, because who goes to Alaska without a cowboy hat? <laughs> um, yeah, here's where I hang my outdoor jackets and stuff. It's really nice to use, you know, the little bit of hanging space that I have. By the way, most of my Clothes and other worldly possessions are kept in very organized totes down beneath my bed. It's really, really a simple way to keep my stuff dry and at least somewhat cleanly. Um, here's a little cooler. Um, here's an ottoman that's also a little storage container. I can put stuff in it and I can sit on it. Some postcards, uh, some paintings, you know, headbands, etc. My dad's fishing rod. Here's a little cooler. This whole experience has brought about challenges that I really didn't know that I would be able to overcome. <laughs> Mostly, I went to a boarding school in uh, Wisconsin when I was in 11th grade for half a year that was like all focused on environmental stewardship. So I was like away from home for half a year, but I was also, you know, in a dormitory setting. So I kind of knew what it was like to live in a small space, but like that was around people constantly so like the solitude has been really strange the doing adult things kind of stuff has been really strange um having neighbors as you may know we're situated in a campground so it's been um, a little bit challenging for me adjusting to having people around me at all times and having to share um my space with other people and my privacy with other people but all in all it's been really fascinating um knowing that strangers have the opportunity to like glimpse in on my life and to like you know find out little things about me and i've enjoyed doing the same thing to other people talk to everyone and smile at everyone and say hello to everyone it doesn't matter what kind of town you're in it doesn't matter if you are in the bush in a cabin and you just like have a stranger walking by say hello to everyone that you talk to and then things will go easier for you
yeah, so I guess that's about it, but yeah, this is my, this is my house, this is where I live. Perfect. Wow, Get I feel it. like I talked a lot. Well, that's what I'm here for.